Google Summer of Code 2024 proposal opening will start very soon, starting from March 18th. This video will help you prepare your proposal in a very structured format. And I can help you. Why? Because I was part of Google Summer of Code 2023 at an organization called CA Microscope. And there is a disclaimer before we can start with this video. This video is only for those who has already made few contribution to open source repository. If you have not made, then probably it is going to be very, very difficult for you to crack Google Summer of Code because this is very competitive and there are so many out there who have already made the contribution. So the only thing that is left to you is to try your luck, but it's going to be very difficult. Uh, but with that in the mind, let's start with this video. Uh, the first thing is, uh, if you are opening any uh, organization, you need to think of the tech stack that you want to contribute to. I understand uh, this might be one of the normal thing you might have already figured it out, but still you need to understand in depth of whatever tech stack you're about to choose. Uh, tech stack. And once you pick your tech stack, it's also very important to pick three organization uh, that fits your need. So you need to pick three organization that fits your tech stack. And by tech stack, I also mean that it's not a programming languages. After programming languages, there are tons of things that you need to master. It can be object oriented programming. It can be a few frameworks that you need to master. And after frameworks, you should also have few very good impactful projects that you have built using this tech stack. Once you pick your three organization, you need to look into their idea list. So each organization will have their ideas list. And this ideas list is nothing but few of the organization might have new projects. Few of the organization might already have a project and they're trying to improvise it by adding new additional functionalities. So once you pick any organization, you need to decide what project you want to build from those idea list. Uh, sorry about that. Let's drag and drop new component. So once you look into the idea list, you need to pick, pick two projects among those idea list. And it's very necessary to pick two projects because uh, there are cases when one project, there are so many people who are trying to look into one project. So, uh, what I actually did was I usually wanted to contribute to TensorFlow past year. They had a, a project called Raspberry Pi with Media Pi, but unfortunately that project was not proceeded because of few uh, reasons, lack of resources. So what happens is if you want to be in a better position for each idealist, pick two projects and these two projects, once you decide them, you need to look into their code base. Code base might be one of the most difficult part in the entire Google Summer of Code program or pre uh, preparation. You need to understand code base, what they are trying to build, what they have actually built. Now, once you understand this code base, you will have the clarity of what you are supposed to do in the next three months of your Google Summer of Code program. But this is not very easily uh, said than done, right? You need to understand what is going on, what uh, I can do so that I can understand this. So there are two approaches that we can take. Uh, one approach is very simple. Check if it as an example, if that particular code base has few examples, then it is well and good for you. Uh, by examples, I mean, suppose you have open CV, you want to contribute to open CV. They have tons of examples that are already existed. And there are few projects that have built in the previous uh, organization. I mean, previous GSOC time as well. You can look into those examples. Now, once you look into the example, you will have an understanding of what is this library about and what I can do with it. And there are also chances that this particular code base might not have any examples. That's where you need to run, run and check it. What you need to do is run that application and try to see what kind of functionality that particular uh, application is doing. If it, after even running, if you're not trying to get the clarity of what is happening, keep trying that particular application, play as much as possible. 
play as much as possible with that application. Let me add the arrow marks. Uh, all right. Let me pick the arrow mark. Code base, try to run the code base. And if you are still not able to figure out the code base, play around with it. Try as much as possible. Look into the um, minor details. So in the first try, you won't be able to recognize what is happening wrong. How is this working? So th this is where you need to run that application multiple times. See what it is happening. Try to identify the edge cases. So once you play around with that particular project, you need to understand what are the edge cases that you can bring in, that you can solve. And this is where you can take help of uh, any large language model now, since you are in luxury time where you can fully utilize the functionality of AI, make use of AI, try to understand what are the edge cases that I can try to build. So once you identify the edge cases, it will give you a better position to get started with contribution of your open source. But still, this is just easier said than done you will still find very difficult after finding edge cases, you need to understand what is going on inside the code. Now, once you try to understand the edge cases that you need to solve, you need to look into individual functionality, individual functionality of the code. Uh, let me drag this up individual functionality of the code. This will tell you what is each function about. And if you're trying to find it very difficult, you have so many copilot now, just copy that piece of code as chat GPT, what is happening? What this fun uh, function was built for? Is there any edge cases that I can solve using this function? Now, once you identify that particular part, which is going wrong, this will give you a clear clarity of what you need to contribute to. So, so far, uh, what we have done is pick a text tag, choose organization, each organization have an idea list, pick two projects and then play around with the code base. If they have examples, then that is best part to start with, which is my first preference. I usually check for the examples. If there are few examples, I'll copy paste it. Then I'll try to build few same examples and then I'll try to replicate a new thing. And once this is done, you need to run the application. That is, if you don't have an example, try to run that application, then play around with it for two to three days. Try to identify the edge cases. And once you identify the edge case, look into the individual function of the code and just use an LLM to understand the code base. I know this is not the right way, but we are living in the era of AI, so why not? Uh, if you think I don't want to use AI, I just want to go out there and just do the GitHub repository. It is well and good. Uh, that is probably the best thing that you can do. But if you can't do that, make sure you use LLM. That is fine. As long as you understand the syntax of the text tag that you are using. All right. So we are done with the talking. Uh, all these things, what I mentioned here is to have you a PR that is merged or the PR, which is open. Uh, all right. So once you have the PRs uh, ready, the next thing is start building your proposal. And I'll just brief out of what I built uh, or what I wrote for the proposal for my Google summer of code 2023 at an organization called CM microscope. The first thing is you need to decide what project you want to build. So here you have already picked a project. Out of those two projects, if you want to pick both of them, you need to have two proposals. If you are just picking one project, mention the project title and the summary of it. And once you add these things, you need to add the contribution information. So I have added my name, GitHub repository, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Ugging Face, Kaggle, Portfolio, everything that I'm actively available on. And next, let's proceed with the other part of uh, the proposal, uh, you also need to mention the potential mentor name. Not many people write it, but I usually write it. Uh, I just wrote the potential mentor name and who will be my mentor. And I just linked it, linked it to his profile. And now comes the very important part. That is your personal background, your work experience. If you don't have any work experience and if you are still a student, it is again going to be very tough for you because there are people who 
can also get into GSOC just by their work experience because GSOC primary criteria is 18 plus above and there might be few participants who are of age 22, 23, who are doing their master degree. So in order to be in a very good shape, it is really appreciated if you have a work experience. Uh, so I was part of research intern at CCCIR and I also represented a paper uh, for which I also won a best paper award. And it was related to Raspberry Pi and open, uh, not open AI. It was one API by Intel. And I also work with FPGAs and uh, the major thing is uh, what this organization was building, right? CM microscope. It was luckily part of image processing. And if you look at my work experience, I usually worked on hyperspectral images and how you can use deep sort algorithm. So this was very interlinked to what that organization is building and it becomes very important, right? Suppose if you are uh, contributing to our organization called TensorFlow and if you have used TensorFlow in one of your project at your internship, this is really very good because you understand how you can use that particular uh, framework. So this is where I had a higher uh, possibility of getting into CM microscope because I had a very great understanding of image processing and I also worked with 3D images. So as you can see, I was working with MNET CNN and hardware accelerator for CNN on FPGA, I had understanding of how to use and ML project on a hardware kit. So this was my experience. And I also had experience with uh, GraphQL Yoga at my internship at uh, O slash. And apart from GraphQL Yoga, I was also working with Cloudflare workers. So these were my work experience. And as you can see, I also had a volunteer uh, experience at Keras working group at Hugging Face, where I pushed two models, uh, which are two spaces replicating from Keras IO. So this is what I did. And this for my work experience during uh, March 2023, then I joined EI Planet. Uh, and again, I joined Google Developer Expert Program. So that time I didn't add those two things. So I didn't add it, but this were very good enough for me to get into CM microscope so that I had image processing domain. This is where I told you, pick your tech stack. Now comes the very important part that is your open source contribution. If you don't have open source contribution, this is going to be very tough, but you can try your luck. Uh, I don't think it is going to be possible, but who knows? Just try out your luck. And now uh, I just added all the merge PRs that I made and whatever PRs were in open state and whatever PRs were in closed. So if you see one thing, I didn't contribute to CM microscope. My most of the contribution were at Keras, uh, MediaPipe, TensorFlow. As I said, uh, I was supposed to participate in MediaPipe, but there was a project, MediaPipe with Raspberry Pi. This project was removed just before the proposal opening was getting started. That's where I told you, pick two projects. So bad luck happens, but that's fine. I ended up with an uh, offer at the end of the day, which is the best thing. And now let's proceed with the next thing, which is your academic project. Again, I added four projects where I used TensorFlow, where I used uh, OpenCV, and again, TensorFlow and uh, Computer Vision. So these were my four projects. And as I al also said that I did a paper representation in an image processing domain, which was related to Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I just added all the links over here along with the certificates. And now starts the main part of what you're trying to do for that organization you need to write the project outlines, uh, the project goals that you want to achieve. This project goals is nothing but what you have picked here. This project title, right? Project summary. What are the goals for it? Just write down in three to four sentence. And once you define your project goals, you need to have a detailed timeline of what you will do in the next three months, starting from April, uh, not April, May, June, July, and August will be your final evaluation. So you need to have a entire pipeline or entire timeline ready. So as you can see, your community bonding period is the first thing. So it was from May 4th to May 28th. Whatever you will do, you just 
right to uh, you just have to mention it down and that starts your coding phase uh, the coding phase one is nothing but for eg soc you have community bonding period you have your midterm evaluation and you have a final evaluation so before midterm is your coding phase one after midterm and before final is your coding phase two so i just mention it week by week on what i'll do week two what i'll do week three what i'll do week four what i'll do then you need to prepare for your midterm evaluation both you and your mentor needs to uh, uh i mean both you and your mentor needs to fill the form that is shared between this particular timeline and one thing you should always keep in mind is communicate during your entire bonding community bonding period get in a very good touch with your mentor communicate as much as possible if you have any doubts communicate if you are facing any issues communicate uh, you need to decide what medium you need to choose whether it is whatsapp or email you need to decide that during community bonding period and be in touch with mentor if anything is going wrong let them know and the best part of gsoc is to uh, network and also to communicate communicate is the key and if you ca- if you are communicating better then you will be in a very good shape and then comes the midterm evaluation uh, both the mentors and you need to fill this out and once you pass the midterm evaluation you can start with the coding phase too but your results will definitely be announced within a week but you should not wait for the result but get started with the coding phase too and i'll just tell you that keep communicating don't miss it out uh, it's better to have one uh, one meet every week if not two to three weeks i mean two to three meets every month and there are also people who has done one meet every day that is well and good uh, but it's recommended to have at least one or two meets in two uh, i mean three to four meets in a month which is a fair number and then starts your coding phase too again brief it out of whatever you are trying to do usually uh, if you look at the project it is for 12 weeks project as i said 3 months so i have concluded at week 12 and that's the end of the uh, coding phase too and then you need to prepare for your final phase so what i did was for each week i wrote blog articles you can check out the link in the description i wrote a blog article every week so that i can communicate with my mentor and if anyone is checking out my project he can look at my blog articles as well and then i just did a project timeline summary where i mentioned all my time period and what i will be doing and a summary summary of my task so if the mentor is not going through this entire thing he'll just look into my project summary so it depends on mentor whether he wants to read this entire thing or whether he just have to focus on the summary and after you have written the summary you just have to outline what are your commitments how many hours you can spend for your project and lastly i just added what skill i have and more details about me so i was part of uh, deep learning.ai as an event ambassador i was also part of tensorflow user group bangalore as an assistant organizer and i have published articles uh, so in geeks of geeks i had 30 articles medium analytics vidya now obviously the numbers are increased and that's it i ended up with the thank you message so it's better to have your proposal between 9 to 14 pages i just kept it in the minimum which is 9 page and yeah that's it from this particular video and if you are participating in gsoc all the best and make sure to communicate with your mentors make sure to be in touch with them this is going to be the best summer you will have three months enjoy it it's going to be worth it thank you so much and do subscribe